she parella. Says she flirt with her boyfriend, virgin him of money and bling, so she... Sex work is illegal in Jamaica, but many have chosen this lifestyle out of what they believe to be necessity. I choose this kind of work because growing up as a 13-year-old, I did not, I leave school at an early age and my mom did not want me in the house anymore and stuff like that. I did not have anywhere to go and I have a friend my mother is not really that close and she said to me if I want to make some fast money and I said okay my mom don't want me in the house so and it makes sense I don't have anywhere to go so Barry is a sex worker based in Portmore I started on this job from 15 years old and keep on keep on doing it now I'm 22 and you more make money on the weekend than during the week during the week if you make a five thousand dollar, that's good. Sometimes you don't make none at all. So on the weekend, you can probably make a twenty pack or fifteen in them bracket for the five by staying on the compound for the week. It is easy for us to stay on one side of the fence and judge. Um, coming from from that perspective too, where I I stood on the fence and I I used to judge, and until you get to know persons and, and the realities of what people go through before you truly understand why people make the choices that they do. A lot of our, a lot of our sex workers, they don't want to be sex workers. They wish they had something better to do. However, what is there better to do? And, and so it, it, is, it boils down to a choice that they, they, they have to make for, for themselves and their families. Marlon is president of the Sex Workers Association. He is no longer practicing the trade, but is now an advocate for sex workers. While he was mayor of the Sunshine City Portmore, Keith Hines was a staunch critic of the practice. As far as I was concerned, as the mayor of the, one of the largest cities in the English-speaking Caribbean, you find that every city has entrances. And our, one of our entrances happened to be the Port Dennis Road. No, you would have persons coming off our major thorough toll road, coming into Portmore, and the first thing that you'd run into when you ride on the Port Dennis back road would be girls that some of them would be even <laughs> as much as naked, plying themselves on the Port Dennis Road. You cannot build a community in no shape or form. And the entrance to the city, when you enter it, is you're running to naked women selling themselves. The concerns surrounding the trade are generally threefold. There are those opposing the practice of sex work on moral grounds. Then there are the public health and other social concerns. Chairman of the Portmore Minister's Fraternal, Bishop B.S.C. Dyer, gives the views of the church community in that area. We don't believe that it should be legalized. The real problem will not be solved by legalizing it. There's no person that give their body in that way have become any big, have any big success in the end, unless they're turned away. The sex work population is, is a particular interest and a priority for us because they are identified as one of the high-risk groups. The HIV rate in this population now stands at 5%, down from 12% in the early 1990s. The concern still remains because 5% is still high, um, although that shows a reduction, it is still a high um, figure. So therefore, we want to ensure that we're able to take the service to the persons that need it and we want to ensure that we have ease of access to these persons. So definitely regulation would help us in, in that sense. Behavior Change Coordinator in the Ministry of Health, Marion Scott, notes that outside of public health risks, the members of the community are vulnerable themselves. We also have other issues in terms of the what we call social vulnerability of these women. A lot of them that we meet have either, um, they've not finished or not completed high school, whether because of pregnancy, economical factors, a host of things. So therefore, 
some of them may feel like this is their only option and being in this field for a time it may also impact their self-esteem and their self-worth which filter, filters down into their self-efficacy in terms of reducing their own personal vulnerability. We also have the issue where we find that we do a number of trainings with sex workers. A number of, of, of them have identified, you know, I want to do something else, but you train, you take them into different fields, expose them to different things, but then the job market is not there, so they end up remaining in sex work. You have to be very strong on the street because the street is like L. As a new face on the road, you don't know who they with who, from who they with who, and the road. Because you have girls live with guys and guys want to have do business with you. Meanwhile, them have them girls. When well, them girls find out there's a big war because I've been through it and I almost died. The male sex work population is, is a bit more difficult to reach because of the fact that they are more highly stigmatized. And, and their activities are usually surrounded by a lot of violence, a lot of, of discrimination, and as such, they're constantly on the move. There are other male sex workers who have exclusive relationships with female clients. This also proves to be a health risk. That was Marlon's experience. Health risk, yes, because there were, there were times when you had to prove to a client that you they were the only person that you were with. Um, because that's how it is with male, male sex workers. The, it's, not, it's not about going out every night, it's about having one person that takes care of you. And so you, you have to show loyalty to the person and that loyalty also includes unprotected sex, just to prove that you are being faithful to them. What we do at the association, we advocate for the, the fundamental rights of sex workers. You see, our government signed on to, to treaties and conventions that, that speaks to all of, all of what we do. Um, when, when, whenever a sex worker goes to seek medical attention at a health center or at the hospital, there, there are certain conventions that protect their right when they go to the police station. There are also security concerns, as sometimes even the team from the Ministry of Health are at risk. Sex work is also shrouded in a lot of other illegal activities and so therefore, you know, it, it puts us at risk when we're working with sex workers. I'm talking about criminal elements that would have come into Portmore on the Port Tennessee Road offering protection to these girls. Um, I remember one of the first raids the police carried out on that Port Tennessee Road. I think a gun to the extent of an M16 was dumped into the sea around there on that particular night. Right? Um, we need to understand if there are things that we are going to bring into our community, we need to understand that there are greater ramifications than just the girls that are sitting there. Human trafficking has also been closely linked to the sex work trade. Young persons may be lured to find employment, not realizing what they are getting involved with. The question is, can decriminalization and a regulation of the industry help to address public health and social concerns? Regulating the industry would help us in terms of reaching those that are underground. Last year we did some work with police officers and healthcare workers and um, a funding agency, CVC, Caribbean Vulnerable Communities Coalition, they did some research in, on the industry and it showed that violence, um, drug use, abuse from police officers and law enforcement um, officers and healthcare workers were some of the main factors that were driving the, the, the spread of the epidemic among, among the populations. There are aspects of the sex work industry that is not illegal. Um, operating an exotic club is, isn't illegal. Um, as long as there, there are no evidence of sex being, being sold at the premises. And so a lot of our exotic clubs are licensed as adult entertainment industries. 
but um, the, the, the whole act of penetrated sex, that's, that's a part that is illegal. What would a regulated industry look like? Europe gives us some examples. In Austria, prostitutes are registered and go through a weekly medical examination to avoid sexually transmitted diseases. Soliciting is illegal. In Belgium, it is legal to rent premises for the purpose of prostitution if it does not disturb the public order. In Denmark, prostitutes can register themselves as independent workers. Soliciting is illegal. In Greece, they penalize pimping, but require brothels to have permits. Prostitutes also undergo regular health checks and pay social security. For the former mayor of Portmore and the Portmore Minister's Fraternal, they suggest other alternatives. I've had meetings with those young ladies, myself, to explain to them what they were doing could not be the best thing for themselves. I congratulate the government for this program they call JEEP. And I've seen a lot of women that are involved in the work, helping to clean the streets, helping to um, plant, put in new plants, getting involved in agriculture. There's so much more that can be done. As the discussions continue, Barry has a final word for fathers. Fathers, just be there for your child. Don't ill-treat her or ill-treat him. Just know that he's your child and no matter what or whatsoever she wants, you give it to her because if not, she's going to be like one of us in the future or worse than one of us in the future. So what I'm saying, the fathers, the fathers then must be there for their daughters and protect them from being on the road.